John Doyle from Optics EQ, and today, instead of doing a video race of the day, I want to go back and look at races that we had previously handicapped on video race of the day, and that's last week's early pick four at Aqueduct, because I think it's important to go back and look at races after they run to try to get more familiar with Optics Plot and Grid and all the rest of our products. It's a good learning tool to do it. So I'm looking at race two. We handicapped this race. And there's a couple of things that are very important that you always need to keep in mind. You always double check data, right? So when we originally handicapped this race, it was very early on. So uh, we didn't even have, we didn't even know there was an entry in the race, so to speak. So if you look at, I'm going to pull it up. This is race two. I'm gonna, you see, I pulled up the old plot on this thing and we didn't have an entry. So the nine, uh, there was nine horses, and that's that was all wrong. So all the numbers were mixed up. So when we did this, um, it was all off. And so, you know, it got really confusing. So that's the first thing, you know, make sure. That's why uh, it's great to have the plot because it's interactive, right? It updates when updates are coming to us. So this was so early that that's, that's what happened. So when you're handicapping really early, make sure you check the numbers and check the updated plots. So that's the first thing. The second thing was, the plot itself, if you look at the contention in the race, it was a flame. And the reason why is we had two e-horses in that race, and they're both big circles or medium-sized circles. The race changed dramatically with the scratch of one of those horses. So you can see on the left, the numbers, again, are all confused. Uh, but you can see how the race changed. You can see how the contention changed, too, and the speed rating was low. So... You know, this race went from a race where we probably were favoring horses off the pace to or like pressing to horses that uh, might be in quadrant one. Uh, so th those are two important points. Always check the numbers uh, when you're handicapping way in advance. Second, um, always check after scratches. And that's why I don't handicap off of PDFs anymore. Right. I'm, I'm right in here because any scratches that get that happen, they get updated it can make a dramatic change, especially since, you know, if, you, if you've got a PDF, you print it out, you go to the track and there's scratches, you know, you got a whole new ball game. And so was the case here. That's two really got upgraded. Uh, there was a couple of things. There was a scratch of another horse too that we had talked about, but uh, you know, this, this made the two much more viable and, and also the five much more viable contenders. And so what you see here is the gold, silver, and bronze. So for, for win play show, that's the results you see up here the order of finish in the race with the odds of the horses so this is a good uh, tool to, to kind of look at and say well where do the winners come from so the two was a wire to wire horse the five the, the two uh, quadrant one horses went uh, wire to wire uh, in this race essentially uh, so they ran around the track together uh, and you could kind of see that with this bar here this kind of just shows you the start position that means this horse is in front pretty much went all the way and the five followed him OK, so so that was that. So that's important to look at. And in this race, you know, again, we thought the the two was going to be hooked by another horse that was scratched, uh, might set it up for the three and the six. Uh, and uh, I think there was one other deep closer that we were kind of interested in. But I think uh, I think this race got really kind of convoluted with the, with the uh, changes in the numbers and scratches. So so that's something to pay attention to. Uh, if you look at the next race that was in the sequence, it was race three at Aqueduct. Uh, in this race, you know, the eight just kind of from a just a visual stood out on the plot. But, but again, the one thing you got to always be aware of is that these horses coming off a layoff. And this horse coming off a 68 day layoff off, off a good race. So it's kind of weird is that. You know, they're starting a new form cycle. So when you're looking at their plot, you're looking at a past form cycle. So keep that in mind as you're going through this. Uh, we were very strong on the six. Surprised uh, this horse didn't win. It's kind of kind of the nine wired to field. We talked about the nine speed, but we just didn't think he was good enough. So we were kind of wrong. He was coming out of parks races, too, you know, at the same level, the last race. And he didn't run, he ran poorly, really not much excuse, but he buzzed the speed of the race and essentially ran the field off their feet. You can see he's here. He's never even actually ran a route of ground. So he kind of controlled the pace. 
Um, very surprised the six didn't win this race. We were kind of strong on him. Uh, we were strong on a, the number seven who got scratched out of this race too. That's strong, but we thought he was a long shot. And our long shot, the number three, Simple Sugar, ran his race at 9.7 to one. He ran a pretty good race. Uh, and that was one of the horses we were high on. So um, missed the nine, would have been more of a C in our pick four though. We did mention the fact that it's always dangerous. You know, Lone Speak always be dangerous. We thought he might uh, be able to shake loose in a race that was kind of other than the six was kind of up, up in the, uh, up in the air. So that was race three. Go to race four. And we were pretty solid on this. And this is another one. I'm going to bring up the, uh, the old plot too, to show you how this changed. Right. So this race, uh, if you remember the big horse in here, the five goes away, really gave the four, especially on the surface and distance, a huge advantage. R1, the horse that we were high on, we thought the one and the eight, were the other horses in this race. The one we gave a, a very good look. So surprisingly enough, he was over bet um, practically seven to two. I didn't think he would, we thought we could get much better price, especially with his scratch dealer entry. So he kind of was undervalued, but he ran his race uh, and he almost pulled off the win coming from off the pace. So you can see he was the silver. He ran second, he ran third, the other big box. So you can see the results, four, one, eight. We pretty much nailed you know, this race. Uh, with the three favorites, nothing big, but I mean, it's the fact that, that it was what it was. So you take what you can get. So that was that race. And then the fifth race, um, this was a messy race. Um, we had talked about spreading this race. We talked about the two and the 11 being probably the main contenders, but we were really made a heavy case on the number six, Eucharist. And I want to go back and just go back to how to handicap using notes and form cycle and what we did here. So I'm gonna, if you remember what I did was I showed you really what the recent speed figures of these horses were. So it's kind of like light, right? I mean, the highest speed figure was 74. So that's kind of the current form. I'm gonna clear these out. I'm gonna go look at number six, Eucharist. And again, the way we do this is we kind of look at where this horse's recent form was. So you gotta, you can't look at, so we, he won the race, okay? He shocked us though, in, in terms of his price, 18 to one, but we'll take it, we're not complaining. But we started with this race here on the 19th. And remember I did a, I went back, I looked at this race in terms of its strength. And you remember how to do that. You just double click this run line and then you get to the plot. So you can look at the plot and see, if, you know, again, it's a result plot. So you can look at, it looked like a lone kind of speed horse, you know, wired the field. Right, so that's that's good to note. And then you do the grid, and that'll give you uh, all the horses that ran in that race. And then what I just do is I look for um, since the date was eleven nineteenth, I want to see anything that's greater than twenty twenty one eleven nineteen. So that means how did these horses come back? You know, the next time they ran. So eleven nineteen. And and you could see that you know you got two winners already coming back. But also I want to note is the, the speed figure. So I'm going to say greater than or equal to because I want to see how much they improve their speed figure. So you could see here the one improved by 71, 14 on the four. Okay, one only one on the five. Uh, you know, 10 obviously now on this horse. But you could see there was significant improvement um, in this race. So we knew it was a solid race. You could see by the plot that this horse, um, Eucharist was kind of against the flow in this race. The nine looked like a lone speed in that race. So some things to like about this horse. So that race wasn't as bad as it looked. I guess that's the point. And then the race before was a kickback. And so what we did is we went and kind of like told a story about this horse. We start, uh, we have this process. We kind of go to the, to the back end. Since he's a lightly race horse, only a three-year-old. We just go back and see this horse's history. What's what's he telling us? What's the story he's telling us? So the first thing we noticed is he he wins the maiden special weight at Keeneland. That's impressive, right? You get a good that's a good track, and especially uh, in the fall there, you had some two year olds started for the first time. That's that's a good thing. And the first time with winners, he didn't run bad, and the note here was shorter. So it was just like probably not a router was was the estimate. Then something obviously went wrong with the horse. It's a 232 day layoff. They bring him back way over his head. 
uh, in a very strong race and just slow out of the gate and just never gets on track. Then they bring him back off another kind of little bit of a layoff, drop him down, runs a, a better race, runs fourth, uh, 75 at Saratoga. So he's running against, you know, pretty good caliber horses, uh, you know, at Saratoga. So just take that in mind. And then turf, this horse, who knows, maybe they want to just try something at back routing, which is, again, what he didn't want to do. Um, so the note here is sprinter drop. That's what they did. And again, this is where we got the kickback. And we, we said that, uh, you know, this was something that really could hide a performance, a kickback. Right? So we expected big improvement. It didn't improve as much as we thought. But again, we know the race was stronger than it looked. And that's why we projected another move forward for him. And we thought that he could run in around that 75, 80 range that he's run before. He could win the race. And that's what happened. And we got um, really an unexpected big price on that. So that's the review. I wanted to show you again how to use optics plot results and grid and look at how after races are over, you want to reassess. But the important point here also is to make sure you track the information on the plot because it does change as scratches happen and they can have a huge impact in the actual way the race may unfold. Okay. Join us for more of these talks. Just uh, subscribe to our optics uh, channel on YouTube and uh, look at us at opticseq.com. This is John Doyle. Thanks for listening.